Kali Meta, Kali Meta, and welcome to the Peloponnese. This is the very southern part of the Balkan Peninsula here in Greece. I'm staying in a city called Kalamata, but our travels have taken us today to the fortress city of Methoni, a very ancient place with a very interesting history. It's terrible weather here in Greece right now. We're experiencing something called a Medicane. It is a Mediterranean hurricane, and we've got rain, we've got wind, we've got it all. So let's get in the fortress. All right, the weather is incredibly miserable, but that's what a Medicane is, miserable Mediterranean weather. So the story about this fortress, here's this fortress, very beautiful, very interesting fortress. This was built by the Venetians. There have been many fortresses here over a long period of time, but the current one in the current state was built after the 1200s when the Venetians took this land from the old Byzantines. Trying to read the history for this island or for this southern tip of the Balkan Peninsula is incredibly confusing because so many different people have been here. So basically Constantinople fell that's Istanbul, just uh, to the northeast of here. It fell in 1204 during the Fourth Crusade. And in that time, this whole area became a, a jumble of many different peoples here. One of the most famous people that you can find here is actually a French crusader um, who was very important in establishing this city as a very important focal point for the Southern Mediterranean. Long story super short, the Venetians were here after the Byzantines. The Venetians held on to this for a long time. We talked about in the three episodes that the Venetians were big into the philostracy, the, the naval empire, and this was a very important point for monitoring their naval empire. And of course, a very important for trade up along the Adriatic Sea. So the Venetians were here for about 300 years, managing their naval empire through these big walls. And of course, creating a very, very effective and efficient military and naval state, a state of traders. So what happens next? Well, of course, as everything in this region, the old Ottoman Empire came in. They, uh, they fought hard and they defeated the Venetians quite quickly. The Venetians didn't hold on to this land very well, very quickly. The Ottomans were so ruthless to, especially the Greeks in this part of the uh, part of the Mediterranean that the story goes that once they took over Methoni, there was just about you know, like a thousand people kind of, you know, intermittently living in the city. The city used to be down there and everybody in the city was either massacred or turned into a slave. Not good. Classic Ottoman Empire. The Ottomans held on to the southern part of the Peloponnese for couple hundred more years but uh, the Venetians came back they were not happy that they lost this place and the Venetians decided it's a really really important point in the Mediterranean that they needed so they came back they took it over so the Venetians held on to it again until about the mid 1700s when it went back to the Ottoman Empire so after the Venetians second stint here this area was recaptured by the Ottoman Empire but not Long after, there was a big uprising in Egypt, and there was a famous Egyptian kind of warlord captain that was revolting against the Ottoman Empire. He took this land as well. So, the Egyptians were here for a little bit. It got taken back by the Ottomans, and then, of course, finally the Greeks, they come through and they get to take over this land, helped in part by the Russians and Catherine the Great. The Russians, of course, were very interested in pushing their influence south or as far as they could from Moscow. And there was something called the Orlov Revolt where a Russian naval captain helped this city break free from the yoke of the Ottoman and Egyptian control. The Ottoman Empire in Greece crumbled around the 1821 Greek Revolution where Greece became its own sovereign nation under the, under the kind of protection of the three great powers of Europe, Russia, France, and the United Kingdom. And in 1835, the Bavarian kind of empire, or the, we can call it the, the Holy Roman, Roman Empire, established a king here. So the first king of Greece actually was German. And he ended up uh, ruling from a different city in the Peloponnese, just if you go this direction. 
It's a crazy place. You can think of this, this island, but this place specifically of Methoni as a place with so many different people doing so many different things. Similarly, everybody wanted it and everybody fought over it right here. What I truly love about this region of the Balkan Peninsula and of Greece and of oh, just all these places that I keep going to is the more you go to places, you realize none of these places are particularly very Greek, very Roman, very Turkish, very Ottoman, very whatever. It's just the modern, the modern countries that we live in today are just an amalgamation or a blend of all of these presences and peoples who have been through this land for the last 2,000, 3,000 years. It's really mind-blowing to think that, you know, I'm standing on this really beautiful area, a really, really beautiful large fortress, and so many people fought and died for this fortress, and now it's just a simple tourist attraction with the beautiful Mediterranean coast. It looks a little bit more like Ireland today than Greece, but uh, beautiful nonetheless. And so many people have been through this land. It's just so, the stories are so unique and so crazy. It's really hard to believe that all of this happened here in Methoni. I always find it both interesting, compelling, and strange walking around the ruins of so many empires, of so many people, of so much blood spilt for this land. And in the context of today's Greece and today's economy, society, whatever you have it, it's just always interesting that this stuff still exists because it was built really in stone. And we can walk around it today, visit it, and enjoy the stories of such beautiful places. Probably the coolest and most well-known part of this fortress here in Methoni is the Burtsi. This was a Venetian built fortress that's kind of like in the middle of a little man-made island here. And they used to call Methoni one of the eyes of the Peloponnese, meaning that it was a very important point in the Peloponnese for watching both trade and military actions in the Mediterranean Sea. So from here, From this point, you can get a really good 360 view of this entire part of the Mediterranean. So this was a really important post, point, whatever you want to call it, for the for whoever was owning this land at any point in history to occupy and to have, which is why so many people have fought over it. This incredibly windy place here also served as a lighthouse, a place of refuge if there were people attacking, as well as a prison for prisoners of war caught maybe docking over here. And maybe the coolest part of this whole place is you can still go into the old battiment here on the top of this kind of sea fortress. And you can only think of all the different people who have watched so many things through these little windows. Whew. So windy. The Medicaine is real. getting rained on pretty significantly now. Whew. Here you're gonna see a beautiful Ottoman hammam or a mosque. I don't know, but we're gonna check it out. Whew, 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 whew. This is definitely an Ottoman hammam. If the Ottomans were known for doing two things when they conquered places, it was erecting mosques and hammams or Ottoman style bathhouses. And you can tell because in the back over here, these are the rooms that people typically sat in. They would put some sort of steam chamber. Maybe it was back here. Maybe it was down in the ground here. They always had these circular domed roofs. So when the Ottomans, it was one perk of being in the Ottoman military is you got to steam yourself with the boys, get nice and clean. And uh, while you were, you know, taking over different places, part of the thing. And here from the top of one of the bastions, you can see an amazing view of the little bay right here, the fortress, which is actually gigantic. And over here, the southern Mediterranean coastline. And the modern city of Methoni behind it. Just as the Ottomans left hammams and mosques everywhere they went, 
the Venetians left this insignia. This is the Lion of St. Mark, the patron saint of the Venetian Empire. And every place you go that the Venetians were, you will find this lion either in a statue or embedded into the wall. And there's another one down here. So now we're in the modern town of Methoni. About 2,000 people, super small, but really quaint, cute. You've got the houses, you've got the church, you've got the little streets, you've got the local residents walking their dogs. I wanna show you guys something cool which you don't see often, but here is a pomegranate tree. Beautiful, beautiful. You can see on the ground here. Beautiful little pomegranates. It's a very Greek experience here in Methoni. Very, very Greek, even though the weather is super bad. So it seems that every small Greek town has an Orthodox church because Greeks are Orthodox Christians, just like the Byzantines. A nice little old town tucked in the hills. And what I love here is since Greece, even though it's in the U, is very still part of the Balkans, you can still find lots of beautiful kind of old buildings that are slowly fading into history. today's episode in Methoni. Since it's raining, I figured I would take you guys for something sweet. So, I've went to a little bakery and I've gotten two traditional Greek desserts that I'm very excited to share with you. The first thing we have here is called vipla. It seems to be a large fried piece of very thin dough that is then rolled up and soaked in honey and covered in walnuts, possibly. So, let's, uh, let's give it a try. Oh. That was not the texture that I was expecting. So it's fried and crunchy, but because it's soaked in honey, it kind of retains a little bit of that crunch, but it's mostly kind of, it's not soggy, but it's also not crispy. It's like right in between. It becomes kind of crumbly like a cake. Very strong honey flavor. Tastes a little bit like nuts. That's nice. I think one of these would probably give you diabetes. So I'm definitely not gonna eat the rest of this. Our last little treat of the day is called curabides, or a kind of white cookie shaped in a sort of crescent covered in a absolute ton of powdered sugar. You can find these all over Greece and these are one of the most traditional cookies that you can probably find in this country. So the only thing left to do is give it a shot. Oh my God. Oh, so the cookie, it's very dry, but not in a bad way, in a, in a nice way that you would enjoy it with coffee. It's like crumbly on the inside and the powdered sugar, kind of, if probably if you had too many of these, you probably would like close your throat because it just is very, very dry, but extremely sugary, extremely delicious. And uh, I see what they're doing here. Kurabies, a very tasty Greek dessert. I really like that one. We have a special extra treat. I went back inside to ask the owner of the bakery if I could shoot some B-roll in his store. This place is since 1904, which is pretty good. And he gave me a mustos. I asked him what his favorite sweet was and he said he really liked the cookie covered in sugar and mustos. So I said, what is it? He said, let me give you one. So, I don't know. It looks like a bagel, but I don't think it is. Let's give it a shot. Hmm. So it seemed the old mustos is, it's like a very, neutral flavored, not too sweet cookie like bread. I know they can get harder. He said these were very soft because they were just made. Um, kind of tastes like a gingerbread, but also kind of tastes like figs. So I'm not sure what's going on here, but really nice, really, really nice. If you want something with your cookie that's not too sweet, probably the one for you. So from a small street in the middle of this ancient city with a beautiful church in the background, we're gonna end the video here. I'm gonna say thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new. So much cool history here in Greece. Much, much more than just ancient Greek ruins. We got a lot of people coming through here through the years and I'm learning so much and I'm 
discovering all of the things that I didn't know about this region through these videos. So I hope you guys enjoyed. If you liked the video, you can subscribe. If you didn't like the video, don't subscribe. If you did like the video, make sure to hit that like button too. Super important. And we got some more videos coming from the Peloponnese, so stay tuned. And as always, yasas. See you later, guys.